The Dallas Mavericks introduced their brand new free agents on Friday. What questions do you have for these new Mavericks as they get ready for this upcoming season? And what grade would you give the Dallas Mavericks offseason now that it appears to be complete? This is the gray area right here on Kevin Gray Sports. My name is Kevin Gray. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there. For all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube, you can catch me on your home of the Dallas Cowboys and Texas Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. The Dallas Mavericks are going to be introducing their new parts on Friday, including Moses Brown, whom they acquired during the Josh Richardson trade. Also, Reggie Bullock and Sterling Brown, the newest members of the Dallas Mavericks. And you will get reintroduced, of course, to guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. Boba Marjanovic will not, unfortunately, be uh, in attendance as he is still in Europe at this point. But I will be in the house at the American Airlines Center on Friday asking the hard-hitting, tough questions of the brand-new Dallas Mavericks. What questions do you have for these new Mavericks? especially in guys like Reggie Bullock and Sterling Brown brought over from the New York Knicks and the Houston Rockets, respectively. Reggie Bullock signing a three-year, 30-plus million dollar deal. A guy last year that shot nearly eight threes per game, shot it over 42%. Sterling Brown last year also shot it over 40% from the three-point line, although a lot of folks may be considering that an anomaly given the fact that he was playing on a very bad Houston Rockets basketball team but nonetheless the Dallas Mavericks tried to improve on the margins after finishing second in the Kyle Lowry sweepstakes they turned their attention to guys like Reggie Bullock and Sterling Brown Bullock especially a guy at 6'6 who can defend multiple positions on the perimeter will not get played off the floor for the Dallas Mavericks and a guy who can shoot the ball extremely well from the three-point line on catch and shoot off the dribble he can score in different ways, especially from distance. For Sterling Brown, can he continue to grow and become a developmental and a rotational piece that allows the Dallas Mavericks to be able to capitalize on being flea market flippers, if you will, by going after a guy in Sterling Brown? Of course, you brought back Tim Hardaway Jr. on a four-year, 70-plus million dollar contract, a guy who always wanted to be a Dallas Maverick, didn't necessarily want to leave, and the Mavericks were able to find a contract-friendly way to bring him back. One of the best three-point shooters, catch-and-shoot three-point shooters in all of the NBA last year led the Dallas Mavericks in three-point field goals made. And obviously a fan favorite and a guy in Tim Hardaway who brings a lot of intensity night in and night out. Say what you want about him defensively. This is a young man who brings it every single night. And an important piece he has become, and the Mavericks made that very clear by prioritizing and making sure that he was back in the fold. Of course, this summer included the Mavericks signing Luka Doncic to his five-year, $207 million rookie max extension, which kicks in after this upcoming season. And in a summer where this is really kind of the final one, if you will, to try and capitalize on any free agency cap space that you may have had, I think the Mavericks did what they could. Now, as I mentioned, when you finish second in the Kyle Lowry sweepstakes, you have to turn your attention elsewhere and to do so very quickly. And I thought the Mavericks did a better job of pivoting quickly after they were able, did not miss, or they missed out, I should say, on their free agent target and won Kyle Lowry. But how much did this team actually improve? I will say that this team improved and is better than the one that ended the season for the second consecutive year against the Los Angeles Clippers. You got better theoretically defensively with a guy in Reggie Bullock. You were able to get guys that fit Luka Doncic's profile as his game is concerned with guys that can shoot from the three-point line. Luka Doncic's usage rate is not going to go down because you did not sign a secondary ball handler or creator to go alongside Luka Doncic this summer. So he's going to continue to shoulder the low and be the primary facilitator on the offensive end. Jalen Brunson, who unfortunately got played off the court due to his size against the Los Angeles Clippers, has got to continue to take the next step in his game going into this upcoming season so that he can not only threaten as a potential sixth man of the year candidate, but be a reliable ball handler and creator, not just during the regular season, but find a way to do so in the playoffs also 
But for Nico Harrison and Jason Kidd, this was about finding a way now to improve what should be a defensive team that was not very good a season ago. Sean Sweetie and this coaching staff are going to have to put in the work to really help this team get better on the defensive end. There are also reports from Mark Stein that the Dallas Mavericks are going to be bringing in 14-year NBA veteran Jared Dudley, who, of course, spent the last couple of years with the Los Angeles Lakers winning an NBA championship and a guy who Jason Kidd knows very well, not only with his time with the Lakers, but also when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks, Jared Dudley, a staunch supporter and defender of one Jason Kidd. So obviously the relationship is there and Jared Dudley will have a prominent role, it appears, as a part of the Mavericks coaching staff. This upcoming season, Christy Tolliver, former baller at the University of Maryland, WNBA All-Star. She will be part of this Mavericks coaching staff also, along with guys like Daryl Armstrong and others. This coaching staff will have the chance now to work with a team that's going to be led by a superstar, Luka Doncic. Can Kristaps Porzingis be the true number two and the Robin 2-1? Luka Doncic is Batman after averaging 20 points and nearly nine rebounds last year. We know Jason Kidd wants to get Porzingis back to some of the things that he was doing in New York, but will Christoph Porzingis' body allow him to do it? And then the question is obviously about the new pieces fitting in, namely Reggie Bullock. Does he find himself getting inserted into the starting lineup potentially in replace of Dorian Finney-Smith if you feel so inclined to relegate DFS to the bench? That's one of the interchangeable parts you might see throughout the season, depending on matchups. But for me, I'm going to give the Mavericks a C plus here. They improved where they could on the margins. Yes, they have a hundred big men to run around on this team between Willie Cauley Stein, Chris Dosporzingis, Boba Marjanovic, and Moses Brown. Yes, Dwight Powell is still there too. And of course, Maxi Kleba, who of course was dealing with Achilles injury toward the end of the season that really relegated him and limited him throughout the end of the season and into the playoffs. So this team, while mostly the same, is going to look a little bit different. And for Jason Kidd, how much different is this team going to actually look? Will they play with the kind of pace that will allow them to potentially outscore teams? Because if they decide to add guys like a Goran Dragic or a Laurie Markkinen, They're not going to play a whole lot of defense, which means they're going to have to score a ton every single night. But what Jason Kidd is going to have to do with his new parts in Reggie Bullock and Sterling Brown is to get them to fit in to what Luka Doncic's program is. Doncic is going to find you as a shooter. He's going to be able to facilitate offense. He's going to be this team's number one scorer once again. This all hinges on Christos Porzingis' ability to be consistent on both ends of the floor and the rotational pieces around both Porzingis and Luka Doncic fitting into their roles correctly. Because you know that Tim Hardaway Jr. as a catch-and-shoot three-point artist is going to do his thing. Dorian Finney-Smith continues to improve as a shooter, especially from the corners. Can he can take the next step in his game? And if Maxi Kleber remains on this team, he is going to have to try and continue to be this team's best and most versatile defender. Especially if you want to keep him around and not move him in any kind of Lloyd marketing trade. So that's kind of where you have it. You've got your guys in Luka Doncic, Christos Porzingis, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleber. You've added, obviously, guys in Reggie Bullock and Sterling Brown. Bo Marjanovic is your situational and rotational big. Willie Cauley-Stein can be your role man. There's a lot of things to like about this Mavericks team, but can they find themselves cracking the top four of the Western Conference. That's going to be the first step for Jason Kidd. Not only getting to the playoffs, avoiding the dreaded playoff, uh, or I should say the dreaded play-in situation, but also getting his team potentially to the top four of the Western Conference. And then can they win a playoff series, something that they have not been able to do since they won an NBA championship back in 2011. All of these things will be led by MVP front runner going into this season, most likely, Luka Doncic, but this was about improving on the margins and trying to do so the best way you could with probably the last summer of cap space that you have. Now, how creative this front office will be with Nico Harrison, Andrew Baker, the capologist, Michael Finley, the assistant general manager, and what they do to try and make moves going forward, that will remain to be seen as this season unfolds when training camps get started at the end 
of September to into the season. We will be watchful, of course, as how that goes down. But for the Mavericks, this is their time to show that their improvement on the margins was good enough to satisfy you and me. And honestly, it may not ever be good enough to satisfy you or me based on the promises that they made going into the summer and what they need to do to improve from a roster standpoint. But improve they did. Marginally, yes. But that's a step in the right direction. And ultimately, for Mavericks fans like you and me, hopefully a positive one going forward. As I mentioned, I'll be in the American Airlines Center on Friday when Moses Brown, Sterling Brown, and Reggie Bullock are introduced as new Dallas Mavericks, and Tim Hardaway Jr. will be taking questions from the media. Also, I'll have a full recap and update right here on Kevin Gray Sports. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there. For all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. I'll talk to you later. Peace.